December 1970, British Railways filed a patent for a space vehicle, a craft that could potentially transport passengers not just across the country, but across the stars. The man behind this audacious idea was Charles Osmond Frederick, a British rail engineer working at the British Railways Technical Centre in Derby. Far from being a joke or publicity stunt, the proposal was deadly serious. The patent was granted in March 1973 and detailed a saucer-shaped craft powered by nuclear fusion. At the heart of the design was a fusion reactor, triggered by laser beams and pulsed at high frequencies, over 1,000 times a second. This reaction would generate immense amounts of heat and energy, which would then be converted into electricity via thermionic converters. This power would feed into a ring of electromagnetic generators, possibly superconducting, to produce lift and thrust by accelerating subatomic particles downward through an exhaust vent. To protect passengers from radiation, a thick shield of metal was proposed above the reactor, and instead of rotating the craft to simulate gravity, as in traditional space concepts, this vehicle would use controlled acceleration and deceleration to create a gravity-like effect for those inside. It all sounds like something out of a Jerry Anderson program, ambitious, sleek, and far ahead of its time. But the reality was far more grounded. The design, while scientifically fascinating, had no clear path to feasibility. The technologies required, particularly stable, compact fusion and efficient superconducting magnets, were decades, if not centuries, away from practical application. The patent eventually lapsed in 1976 due to non-payment of renewal fees. When the patent resurfaced in the 2000s, it caused a media stir. Some mocked it as pure fantasy. The European Space Agency dismissed it as unrealistic, and the railway magazine joked that passengers would likely be fried by the radiation. Colin Pillinger, the scientist behind the Beagle 2 Mars lander, called the idea daft. Yet there's something undeniably charming about the whole concept. In an era of cuts, decline and dieselization, British Rail dared, at least on paper, to dream of the stars. The flying saucer stands as a strange, nostalgic symbol of a time when even a national railway dared to imagine a radically different future.